Tonight on Kitchen Nightmares, Chef Ramsay heads to a beachside eatery in a town called Hull. It's ridiculous! But quickly finds himself in a hellish situation. Oh my god, the scalps are raw! A husband and wife team have lost their passion, not just for the restaurant, but for each other as well. There's an indent on the couch from where he sleeps. The husband is drowning at work. Whoa, come on. While the wife prefers to avoid it. What's Lisa doing? I'm gonna go get a martini. And that's just the beginning. The food is horrific. Bloody hell. God, that's dreadful. And the kitchen is disgusting. Oh, wow. Look at the mess of this place. And the staff is ready to mutiny. There's another what the is talking about. Find yourself a new bar manager. Can Chef Ramsay pull these owners' heads out of the sand? Someone man up! Or will the restaurant and the marriage be forever lost at sea. You can solve this. Close the shop. What is that? You're serving rotten food. We can possibly kill them. Then wake up! You wake up! <coughs> Shut the place down. Get out of here! That is amazing. Thank you, chef. Hull, Massachusetts, a quaint beachside town located just 10 miles from the southern tip of Boston. This is where you'll find Barefoot Bob's, opened in 2004 by husband and wife team Mark and Lisa Caradonna. Lisa and I have always been in this industry, and you know we decided if this is what we want to do, then we have to go out and buy our own restaurant. Welcome to Barefoot Bob's. We opened the doors to a great crowd. Hi, guys. I think we have a table left. And we thought, wow, it's just always going to be like this. Isn't going to be great? And then winter hit Hull. Where is everybody? Our summer business is not enough to carry the other seven months. Once October hits, it drops off to almost 10% of your summer business. So just we're behind, constantly behind. We don't have any money. Oh, no, oh, no. With business rapidly dwindling, Mark figured he would save some money by getting rid of the chef and taking over the kitchen. All right, you got a popcorn shrimp by itself. Leaving Lisa the responsibility of supervising the front of house. You Okay, you and Jess are outside. No, I'm in. Me and Jess are in the outside. <laughs> Biggest problem in the restaurant right now would definitely have to be Lisa. What's Lisa doing? I'm going to go get a martini. What? Gotcha. <laughs> Mark's in the restaurant at least 10 or 12 hours a day, seven days a week. Mark, let me know if you need anything, and I will avoid you. Most of the time, Lisa is on the beach, down the Cape somewhere, or when she is here, she kind of leaves a big tornado behind her and goes out the door, and next thing you know, she's gone again for the weekend. All right, I gotta leave for a few minutes, so don't look good. And it's sad, because this is his life. He's so stressed out. We all fear that he's gonna have a heart attack. That sucks. The poor man is so tired. You can just see it. You can see the stress in his face. I feel horrible for Mark because he wants to make this restaurant work and since it's sinking, their marriage is sinking. Mark and I's relationship has been better. I know I love you. Let's just say there's an indent on the couch from where he sleeps. If this restaurant were to close, I don't know if my marriage to my wife would survive. In order to hear both sides of the story as to what the restaurant's problems really are... Hi, Lisa. Hi. Chef Ramsay has decided to meet with owners Lisa and Mark separately. How are you, big man? It's awful. Everything has just been awful. It's been brutal. Let's go back to the beginning. When we got married, it was, it was marrying my best friend. It was kind of our dream to always do this. So we found this place, had potential. It was you know, kind of we wanted to give it our vibe and take a shot at our dream. What was it like when you opened? It was fantastic. Mm -hmm. Both did front of the house, and people flocked in. What happened next? We didn't know how Where to judge went? the winters. We didn't know what it was going to be like. The first, you know, October came around when, oh my god, where is everybody? The business has been crippled, and now we don't have any money. So I had to basically go into the, into the kitchen, and I've always been front of the house. While I was focusing on that, the front of the house really took a beating. Where was Lisa at this point? She was backing off. She hasn't been too active in the front of the house right. for a while. And that's, that's, therein lies the problem. Help me understand your role in a nutshell. How would you describe it? I come in and I do the books, the receipts. 
a little bit of everything. Mm -hmm. I mean, hands on. She believes that she's doing a lot. She comes in in the morning, a couple days a week. That's really it. She's in two days a week. You're in uh, seven. Seven days a week. Yeah, it's it's this place requires me to be here. I have to work twice as hard because she doesn't. And I'll say something. I'm like, you know, th this is just really awful. And she's like, well, I know. I was angry when I went to the gym. I see myself struggling, and I don't know why she's not jumping in to help. And you talk to Mark? No. No. You can't talk. Rather than voicing it, mm -hmm. we'll just just be pissed off about it instead. Have you fallen out of love with her? No. Has she fallen out of love with you? I don't know. What would happen if the restaurant closed? That'd be that'd be catastrophic. I don't know if our marriage would how how that would be. You know, that scares me. Hello. Hi, Jessica. How are you? I'm Jessica. Jessica. Nice to meet you. My wife's good to see you too. Chef Ramsay's gonna have a lot to say about Lisa. I think that she thinks she's a major asset to the restaurant, when a lot of times she's one of the major downfalls to the restaurant. Please, okay, if great. you would. Of course. Um, what is the big underlying problem with this restaurant? It's Lisa. Mm -hmm. It is. She has it in financial ruins. And why is she put it in financial ruins first? I feel like Lisa takes a lot of um, vacations. Vacations? A lot of vacations. Really? Mm-hmm. Wow. Mm-hmm. If somebody doesn't come in and confront Lisa, the restaurant's gonna go under. Can I start you with something to drink? Um, what the f is this? That's the menu. Seriously? Yes. It's massive. It is. Wow. These things are dirty. Um, is there any chance I could have a clean menu? Absolutely. Thank you, Diane. Mm. Guys, I need a clean menu like 10 minutes ago because he won't even look at this menu. What? So dirty. Are you kidding me? I can feel it. There's not a thing it on is. it. It's filthy. Where? She's not here consistently enough to see how stuff runs anymore. There you go. And I think she's in for a rude awakening. This is not even fun. Thanks, Danny. Oh, that's been wiped. Yes. Okay, let's start with. Uh, is this a typo? Buffalo chicken skins? It's fried chicken with buffalo sauce on top. I know, I get that, skins. but then you've got buffalo chicken skins again. Oh, yes, that is a typo. <laughs> uh, did you know that was on there? Yes. Mm -hmm. Lisa did notice right after they were printed and just never fixed. I suppose for, obviously, locals that are slightly double vision. Mm. <laughs> OK, um, let's go for the uh, Bob's Big Boy platter. OK. Um, anything you'd recommend, darling? Um, lobster roll. I'll taste it, yeah. OK. I've got to go for the chowder. OK. Perfect. Thanks, Tony. You're welcome. There you go, Mark. Chef, ordering in. OK. All right. All right. I didn't have the formal training, but I like to think that I can hold my own. Whoa, too much. <laughs> These plates are filthy dirty. I mean, literally caked in dust. Jessica? Yes? Darling, when was the last time these plates were taken down and cleaned? Um, when did we open? Eight years ago? Yes. You've never taken them down since you've been here? I don't believe so. Wow. My God. Lisa, he's up against the window pulling all the knickknacks down that were all, like, nasty and dusty. He's wiping them all, like, with his hands right now. Inchy's thick. Inchy's thick. Damn, he's observant. <laughs> yes. What is up? Thank you. This is a big buoy. Wow. And it comes with fries and onion rings. Bloody hell. It just cascades off the plate. What's that? A scallop, a small one. That's a scallop? Yes. How rubbery that is. I know. Honestly. They were sent back earlier the same because they were I too mean... chewy and tough. Wow. It's disgusting. Uh, yeah. It's just dumped on here. Do they season anything? No. Bloody hell. Yeah, I'll bypass that, darling. OK. Otherwise, I'll need a bypass. OK. That was a big boy disappointment, let me tell you. Mark, the fries are soggy, and he said he will bypass, because if not, he's going to need a bypass. Close. Well, let's keep in mind, he comes from a place where they think scones are delicious. <laughs> I don't think Lisa is taking things as serious as I am, and that's the problem. Oh, all right. So 
this again. Good luck. Is the last okay, Grace. So. Thank you. Yes. How did you eat this? Where'd you get? Where'd you get? How much lobster is in there? Let's see if I can put the lobster back together. There's the claws. No wonder this place is losing money. Jessica. Have you seen how much lobster is in this roll? Mm hmm Look at mm -hmm. all that. I know. It's a whole lobster. There's more. Lobsters don't have six claws. Bloody hell. Does every sandwich have that in there? Yes, it's typically a, a pound, a little over a, a pound. A pound? Yes. That should be the whole weight of the lobster, not the actual weight of the meat. The portion sizes of everything are huge. That's part of the problem. Mm -hmm. Nothing toasted. Soggy, disgusting. Mm -hmm. uh, darling, I'm done. Yes. We just show uh, Mark that I will. roll. Thanks, darling. Thank you. I'm holding on for my chowder. <laughs> Why? What's the matter with that? This is larger than a regular lobster. What? This, he said that the total weight of a lobster should be a pound, not the meat in itself. He said this is where you lose any money. I think Lisa not being around has drain mark, and it makes a difference on the food. What else sucks? A lobster all sucks. What? Yeah, it's too much lobster. I've never heard anyone complain about too much lobster. Well, it's like having too much money. <laughs> Mind blown. Here's your chowder. Okay. All right. Thanks, honey. You're welcome. Wow. Ay, ay, ay. Flowery, bland, no clams to be seen anywhere. I mean, this is New England. That's what hurts. Jessica. You don't look impressed. Just have a little taste in there for me, please. Oh, it's very thick. It's flowery. It is. I wouldn't even paste my wallpaper with that. Um, God, that's dreadful. Yep. There's just bland. I love Mac tasting. Gloopy glue. Yeah, it's not good at all. Mark, come taste this, please. He said it tastes like wallpaper. He wouldn't paste his walls with it. That's my spoon. It's thick. It's thick. Yeah. Yeah. Chris, it's thick. The scary part is, I thought all our food was good. Oh, my god. What am I going to do? Coming up. Oh, my god. Things go from bad to worse, as Chef Ramsay discovers you kill everybody! A place so disgusting, who can be that dirty? He's ready to throw in the towel. Close the shop. And he's not the only one. This isn't gonna work. Find yourself a new bar manager. After being disappointed by Barefoot Bob's classic New England dishes, where is everybody going? In the kitchen. Could you um, just get them out for me, please? Chef Ramsay is ready to share his view with the kitchen staff. Chris, Mark, and the owners. Come over. And uh, are you the chef? I'm the sous chef. First name? Chris. Chris, good to see you. Nice to meet you. Uh, I don't know where to start. I mean, I'm seriously embarrassed. I mean, guys, the lobster roll. But even I don't put one third of that lobster in my lobster roll. I mean, everybody loves. I mean, I. So this is surprising for you. No. It was just, it was just a mess. Clam chowder. Who puts that together? That's nice. on me, but I don't know what you're talking about. You consider that bowl of to be a representation of your restaurant? I couldn't even find a clam in mine. And that's just a bowl of soup. Problem with the recipe, where's it gone? It's in my head. Oh, it's in your head. One of those up recipes. Apparently. Yeah. Well, congratulations. That's what you said. You can stand there with the arrogance and all the bravado in the world. OK. But when something chef then we'll fix it. We'll fix it. Right. I don't think you care about no fixing it. No one told me you were I'm not going to stand there and kiss your ass. I didn't ask you to. Well, I'm upset. But you seem to be content to get paid to serve Does anyone have any standards in here? I do. Lisa, were you serving food like this eight years ago? I don't feel qualified to comment on what's coming out of the kitchen. That would be luck. Right now, this restaurant is a waste of an ocean view. But you can solve this, you know that. Close the shop. 
I'm lost for words. With Chef Ramsay exposing a lot of our problems, it's overwhelming. With little time to get over the brutal criticism from Chef Ramsay. That was awful. Lisa and Mark prepare for dinner service. Stay ahead of the game, boys. And with it being summertime, How are you Barefoot Bob's is filling up quickly. Would you guys like to start with an appetizer? Popcorn chef. Yeah. Okay. Well, uh, Lisa. No, you just hosted it. So you just... Kind of just overseeing. Overseeing. OK, good. And um, who's that gentleman with a cap on behind the bar? That's Robbie. Robbie. That's my brother. Oh. Holy crap. Jessica? Yes? Is that a crystal ball on the table? Yeah, she's a psychic reader. Oh. It's kind of like a promotion to bring people in. Uh, and does she charge? Yeah, she gets paid through the restaurant. Oh, wow. It's a little odd, I have to admit, that there's a psychic in a tiki restaurant reading your palm. Wow. Hello, how are you? Hi, good, how are you? Yeah, very well, thank you. I've never seen a psychic oh. before. Amazing. And where did you train? Um... I've always wanted to do it, and then I just started reading, and I learned that things were coming true that I was thinking. What was the first fortune you predicted? <laughs> um, my girlfriend was trying to get pregnant, and, okay. um, and I told her I saw a girl, and she got pregnant with a girl. I mean, the girl boy, 50-50, so it's not that impressive. However, I've got some questions about this restaurant. <laughs> Could you help me? Okay. Can this restaurant survive in the next six months? You're asking me my psychic opinion on that? Opinion like or prediction? Because you're confusing me now. All right, I'm going to look at a card then. Oh, my gosh. Well, this says that there's a kink in the system that's not working. Uh, See, there's like a breakup, like a break, like a literal, like, uh, shatter. Something needs to split up. Something okay. needs to be let go of. Like the owners. Possibly. Oh, boy. This is literally a divorce card. Wow. And is this imminent? Are we talking in the next six months, three months, three days? Honestly, it feels like it's a process. There's a lot of forgiveness that needs to happen, but it feels like it is possible. So a happy ending. But if they can do the work that they right. need to do, right? Here we go, bar food. Oh, come on, yeah. Four sliders. Send it, send it, send it. Bye-bye. All right, fried scallops. Santa Fe egg rolls. Full of chowder. Oh dear. Um, does food normally get thrown out of the kitchen that fast? Yeah. yeah. It, it normally. normally comes out at a good pace. Right. Um, does Lisa normally work like this? Um, Lisa's not really here most of the time. Really? Ever? Very rarely. Wow. But everyone seems to be tiptoeing over this situation because I don't think everyone actually understands how like, much on his shoulders. Oh, yeah. It gets very frustrating that Lisa's not here while Mark is here every day busting his butt. Everything's dependent on him, and it's just so much stress on him that's unnecessary. It should be balanced out between the two of them. The rest is beating things with a pole. Oh, yeah. He's had heat strokes. He's had... Really? Yeah. Lisa can't help out a bit more. It's very sad. There's just no words to describe how bad I feel for him, because he's killing himself here. Thank you, Danny. No problem. How is everything? Is there something wrong? Yeah, I'm overcooked. Overcooked, a little too well done. This is like all dough and no filling. I can send it back. Well, Mark quickly pushes food out to the dining room. I don't like it. It tastes terrible. Customers are returning the favor and pushing it right back into the kitchen. Mark, these just got sent back because they're cold on the inside. What? Yeah, it's cold. OK. They want a new order. Yeah, it's coming right now. Mark. Oh, no. Can I have an order of chicken tenders because they don't like their chicken parm, please? Right. Yeah, no. Two minutes. Uh, the month's profit. Turkey tips tied chili. Whoa, come on. Now that Chef Ramsay has observed the pattern of fast food followed by fast returns... This pizza just got sent back? ...he decides to do an examination of the food storage. Mm. Oh. This fridge is dreadful. Wow. Chicken breast. Oh, my God. Just dumped in there. Not even taken out of the bag. That's how lazy they've become. And the whole fridge is not even chilled. It's warm. There's not a decent temperature on the floor here. What is that? Unbelievable. Poor belly in a carrier bag on the floor. Next to the poor belly, you've got cooked chicken. It's actually hot inside, just festered in there. That's sat next to the poor belly, you've got cooked chicken. Cooked chicken, raw pork. 
is that? Some form of chili. Aye, aye, aye. And that's salmon. That was the last one. Excuse me. Hello. You and you, come here. Look. That oh, is a pork. Oh, what? Well, that's yeah, pork, pork fat. fat. Just hold that two seconds. That's next to this. Wings. And the top is soaking wet because it's full of condensation. And this, who grabs that out there and doesn't think about changing the fold? Who could be that dirty? Chili? Chili. Around the outside. Look at the mess of this place. It's ridiculous. Someone that up. Young man, you are running a business. Hot wings next to raw pork. You'll kill everybody. After seeing food constantly come back. All right, this pizza just got sent back. Chef Ramsay headed to the walk-in, and what he found was simply disgusting. Hot wings next to raw pork. You'll kill everybody. Are these fridges out here behind the line the same way? After a service, they're probably dirty. Show me. I didn't realize it was this bad. And that's a pretty awful feel. What the f What is that? It's it was a pizza. It was a pizza. What is that one? How old is that one, then? This one, that one's got to go. Will you seriously cook that for a customer? I can't. And this one? I mean, look at it. Count how many pieces are here, please. Hey, and for me, this is money now. 25. 25. What are you expecting? A cruise ship with 2,000 people coming in. And then you leave that set in there, look. You leave that set in there. You can't take that out. What's that? Oh, no. What is that, please? That's a hider. Is that tuna? That's a what? Yeah. A f tuna? That is a what? Oh, me. And when was this last cleaned? That. Don't, 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 don't you dare try to tell me that was done from last night. Oh, no. God, no. God, no, 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 no. That, I missed. Wow. What a mess. <laughs> if there's one thing you're going to have to learn, get cleaning, Mark. You've got no idea on the hundreds of thousands of dollars that you've pissed through your hands. Oh, boy, oh, boy, oh, boy, oh, boy. I'm absolutely speechless. The whole setup is dysfunctional. The walk-in. A walk-in packed full of We're not talking hundreds of dollars. We're talking about thousands of dollars. Do you have any idea what the real costs are? What's the total purchasing? What's your labor cost? What's our break even a week? You don't know. No, I do. Oh, come on. Don't you do the books? Does anybody know what the break-even is? We should know. We don't. You don't know. Not one of you, eight years down the line, know what you need to take to survive. I'm No wonder you run out of money. All right, I'm gonna clean. No, don't ask. It's gonna be a, a few hours job, yeah. All right. I'm floored. You know, there's a lot of things that we thought we knew and we don't know. That's dangerous. That's when you fail, when you don't know what you should know.
Jeff Ramsey knows that Barefoot Bob's is in need of a major turnaround. <laughs> Please go and take a seat there. He also realizes that this is going to only happen if Mark and Lisa are united. Yesterday was a real tough day. I want to talk about your relationship because that's paramount, because you're not partners in terms of investors. Mm -hmm. You're husband and wife. Right. And it's easy to forget. Lisa, go back to the beginning. The first time you met. Yeah, with a lot in common. Mm -hmm. Just had a lot of laughs together. We had the same personality. He kind of got me. Great. But here's the ironic scenario. You've gone off in different directions. This business needs both of you. And unless both of you get on the same page, that's it. It's game over. Yeah. Lisa, the balance isn't equal. I want to do I want to turn around. You sure? Positive. 100%. 100%. You know, I think we just need to work more as a team. I need to focus on getting that back of the house properly run. I want you to do the front of the house, and we need to talk about it. You know, you're, you're my partner, who I want to be with forever, you know? Let's just really work together on this and let's make it happen we can do it i'm excited to turn around right now i've got a smile good that's right yeah <laughs> that, that there bang done i feel optimistic i know i can commit myself a little bit more to coming back here <laughs> now mark and i just need to work it out rather than just walking in separate directions this has been if anything has made me realize how much i love you Getting this off my chest about the problems that Lisa and I were having is just, it's relieving. We're both on board, and just to hear it from her, that's comforting. So, the one thing that stood in my mind that shocked me is when I asked you, what was your break even? And your response was? I don't know. But there's one thing I've got to emphasize, is that this business needs to be run like a business, and you don't need a general manager. That's not going to make this place work. You don't need a new chef. What you need right now, urgently, is an accountant. And here he is. Please say good morning to Tim McLennan. Hi. Are you well? Yes. Please, yeah, good to see you. Good to Mark. Nice to you, Mark. Hello, Mark. And it's Lisa. Hi, Mark. Nice, nice to meet you. you. This man knows how to run a business. I've arranged for him to be with you as your consultant. He'll put a business plan together, and he'll come up with a budget in place. That's what we've always needed. <laughs> a lot of times, people are good at what they do, but running the business itself, you yes. have to bring in some help. Yeah. Lisa, I've never seen you look so happy. I'm giddy. <laughs> good. Probably the most excited person to ever see an accountant. The business was just so mind-boggling that I didn't think I'd ever be able to get a handle on it myself. Use this time, guys. This man's key to moving forward. Thank you. With Lisa and Mark seemingly on the same page. Mark and Chris, let's go. Chef Ramsay turns his attention to fixing the food, beginning with two New England classics. An amazing clam chowder, followed by stunning fish and chips. Great. OK, let's get the chowder going first. Hot oil first, just a little touch. Bacon in, yeah? Really fry that off. Fish and chips into the bowl. I've got my vodka, a touch of honey. I've never had this kind of guidance from a Michelin-rated chef ever. And just the chance to learn from Chef Ramsay. In? It's a very special deal. Very good. You don't really taste the clams. What you haven't got is a taste of flour. Let's take them out and give the girls a taste. I believe I lost focus, and I believe that my food started to show it. Delicious fish and chips done with a little bit of nostalgia. A delicious clam chowder, would you believe? Ooh. Have a taste. Having Lisa back in the front of the house is going to let me focus on, on our food and what needs to be done to operate a proper kitchen. It's going to be nice to have my partner back. Oh, my God, this is so good. Awesome. This is amazing. Clearly, one of the biggest problems at this beachside eatery is the dramatic drop-off in the winter months. OK, come and stand over here, please. But Chef Ramsay has a plan to turn that around. Now, here's the thing. We think that the summer is the only time we can survive, and the winter, well, we just got to accept it. No, when you consider all these little towns surrounding you, collectively, you've got 100,000 locals. So tomorrow, we're relaunching this place with a much smaller menu. But today, we're going to do a little marketing. We're going to go and reach out to the locals. So we've got some hip T-shirts that are going to get that message out there, loud and clear. Get these on. Let's go, let's go, let's go.
What a gorgeous little town. Beautiful. I'm thinking of moving here. You should. I'm Lisa, I'm the owner, and I'm very proud of it. That's <laughs> okay. very good. Isn't it good? I never eat clam chowder. No, and you like it? I love good. it. That's great. It's good. Look at this, she's killing it. You want some chowder down here? I would love some. Barefoot Bob's, we got Gordon Ramsay helping us out, redoing our menu. It is great that Lisa's out getting her hands dirty, getting to promote her own restaurant. Best fish and chips around. I don't think I've ever seen her this involved and this excited. You guys should come down and visit us. Oh, we definitely will. It's absolutely oh, amazing. Thank you. I'll come back and All right, thank you. Okay. We'll see you at uh, Barefoot Bob's. Yeah. Yes. Thank you. Good night. Nice. Bye, guys. Nice. Coming up, this isn't going to work. Can one bad apple Robbie. spoil the whole bunch? Done. Quit. Will Lisa's brother's negative attitude doesn't know what the f he's talking about create a new rift in the family? We can't have that attitude and have the relaunch spinning out of control. Find yourself a new bar manager. While well, yesterday was a day in which the word was spreading about the new Barefoot Bobs, overnight, Chef Ramsay's team was miraculously creating it. Welcome. Oh, oh my god. Oh my god. Oh my god. Oh my god. Wow. Oh my god. Awesome. Oh, this is beautiful. I love it. We have created a true beachside eatery. Wow. Oh my god. Man, it's beautiful. Gone is that hideous tiki bar theme and that ridiculous wall covering. You've got the walls painted blue and white, resembling the water. Gorgeous! With a strong identity, that strong oh, nautical wow. feel. Yeah. From tiki to cheeky, let me tell you. It's beautiful. This is by far the coolest, hippest, greatest place to be in Hull now. Wow. This what is do you amazing. Think? This is what we dreamed this place was going to be. This is it. Is it, Mark? Mm -hmm. This is what we envisioned really? when we bought it. I couldn't be happier about being an owner of Barefoot Bob's right now, it, this was our dream, but even my dream didn't look this good. <laughs> now, one more thing. I would like to introduce you to a state-of-the-art POS system from POS Lavo and Zephyr Hardware. Oh, our old POS system was like a dinosaur. It was horrid. Now it is unreal. It's the best thing I've ever seen in my life. It's going to be operated by wireless remotes. Oh, Lisa, here's the good news. This baby here will give you an hour-by-hour hour record of your infantry, your purchasing. Every ounce of data can be fed straight back to Tim McLennan. Ah. Everything's amazing, and this is just over the top. <laughs> nice. nice. Thank you. Thank you. So happy you're happy. It's just nice to see her happy. This is going to help her want to be a part of what we're doing here. I think this is going to give Lisa and I a fresh start. Thank you very much. You good? Yeah. This yeah. is awesome. To go along with the revamped dining room. Take a menu and pass one along, please. Chef Ramsay has overhauled the menu with a focus and a finesse of the dishes that New England is famous for. The menu's been condensed, and all the hits have been put on to one menu, but refined. OK, Whoa. what do you think? Beautiful. Let's start off the top of the menu. Raw, oysters, half on the shell, mignonette pepper, cucumber. Next day, you've got a crab cake. How can you be on the beach with no stunning crab cake? Old bay, onion, celery, and mayo. Simple, delicious. Next, you've got lobster roll. Poached lobster with a mayonnaise, a semi-brioche roll, so with a nice tarragon. We're here to make money, not lose it, right, Lisa? Right. If you've got the quality, then less is more, let me tell you. Good. Dig in, guys. This is delicious. Oh, my God, it's amazing. Happy? This is unbelievable. <laughs> All right, you guys, these are mine. Don't touch me. <laughs> I will stab you with my fork. <laughs> Customers will be down the street, around the corner, trying to get in here to get this food. Get away from my corn. Are you guarding that? <laughs> <laughs> With the grand reopening just minutes away, the staff is anxious to open the doors. It's just going to be a gigantic change, you know, and everybody here knows it. But Lisa's brother, Robbie, this isn't going to work, has his doubts. We just lost all of our customer base. Gone. I'm pretty upset about the whole situation. I think the look is a terrible change. <sighs> no one's going to come in and watch a game here. When I look around at the restaurant, I don't see barefoot bobs. Now you walk in, you think you're at some hoity-toity little yacht club. It's the complete opposite of who we are. Truthfully, I think it sucks. I don't know where the blender went. Oh, here it is. Yeah, you are going to be getting all the frozen drinks. I don't think Robbie. we should do frozen drinks anymore. We're not that kind of restaurant anymore. 
This bar has no chance of running smoothly tonight. That's it. I'm done. I quit. I'm sorry. I mean, it's not like the guy lives here. The guy was here for three days. Doesn't know what the f he's talking about. Robbie! Find yourself a new bar manager. Minutes before Barefoot Bob's is ready to open for relaunch. This isn't going to work. Lisa's brother, Robbie, is not exactly pleased with Chef Ramsay's changes. Find yourself a new bar manager. Where is he going now? We get people drunk and we feed people. We're not a five-star restaurant. Is Ramsay going to be here tonight? Because he has some really good words for him. Hey, thanks for up our restaurant. How are you doing? You all set? I think so. Yeah? Good. Lise, ready? Ready. Good, good, good. Bobby, happy? I hope this works, man. Oh, dear. Hey, what do you mean, hope? Hey. I hope. Talk to me. Come here. What's wrong? Uh, why so negative? You've got a face on you like you've just given up. I'm not giving up, man. You haven't given up. What's the matter? I'm just very skeptical. How did you know? Skeptical about what? Just the surroundings. Well, I'm worried about our, uh, our old customers coming back. Really? Yeah. They're a meat and potatoes guy. Have you been drinking? No. I mean, how arrogant are you? I'm not arrogant at all. Shall I give you a little insight? If it doesn't work, the restaurant closes, your sister divorces, and then you pick up the pieces. Where the f are you going to work? Who's going to employ you? I don't know if you know what side your bread is buttered on, but what I'm asking is a commitment of 100%, especially in front of your team. Exactly. All right, buddy. Come on. I don't even want to shake hands. All right. You've upset me. <laughs> Joke. Damn. Mark, two seconds. What the f is going on out there? He says things aren't going to work. Does he have any idea where we are financially? Yes. If anything, he should be sleeping here to make sure this exactly. thing works. He has to be on board. Let me talk to him. I don't understand how he's not on board. That's really upsetting. What keeps us alive, we, we lost. No, we didn't. What we had didn't work. Change has to happen. We got to do it. Do you understand? I'm not going to let this opportunity go. This is what we got to do. I'm not running that restaurant the way it was. I'm not going to sit and watch this restaurant continue to go into the ground. All of us have to be on the same page. We can't have that attitude going forward. I have a short tempo. Change doesn't just sit well with me. But at the end of the day, if Mark and Lisa believes in it, then they're my family, and I'm behind them 100%. Three weeks from now, and we're still packed, and it's working? You know, we, I know. You, you're wrong. I'm in 110%. Let's do this. Let's make it work. That's what I want to hear. That's what I want to hear. Welcome to the new and improved Barefoot Pops. With Mark in charge of the kitchen. Let's go. Right this way, folks. <laughs> and Lisa controlling the front of house. Go, enjoy, folks. Tonight's relaunch will be the couple's first big test. So it's three chowders to start. Can we start with the strips? OK. How easy is that, though? Amazing. I love the new POS system. It's just going to make every single part of the restaurant run together. And I'm sending morale in. Morale in. All right, here we go. I got a crab cake. Crab cake, curd chef. I want to fire a big boy. I want to fire a fish and chips, please. He's got the chowder, and that's working. That's working. Fish and chips. Good. With the first orders leaving the kitchen. To come bearing gifts. What did you enjoy? Barefoot Bob's is off to a solid start, and everything seems to be going according to plan. I can eat probably two of these. Mm. This is delicious. But an hour into service, there's a flood of tickets coming into the kitchen. Two scallops I want to fire up, a fish and chips I want to fire up a big boy. And Mark and the cooks are completely backed up. Another crab cake fired. I'm waiting for a big buoy. It's coming right now. You guys got a lot of gold coming up? Urgently, please. Did you put it up? You, you don't have it? You don't have that at all? What happened with that calamari and clam section that I threw in 45 minutes ago? Listen, that one's coming. No, because you're not getting the first calamari because my table's about to leave. OK, so it's everyone in my oh. bar. Me. With everyone on edge in the kitchen. What time are we seeing? I don't know, but we got oysters. You don't have to cook them, do you? The diners are getting restless, and the relaunch is at a crisis point. Do you want to go? Give them a couple more minutes. You can see the temperatures rising from the diners. Um, I have to jump in and just kind of stop things for a few. Stop okay. taking food orders right now. Stop taking food orders. I need the calamari, I need the clam. I called it. All right, nobody's going to order food for a while. Lisa made an executive decision to tell everyone to stop taking tables and just slow everything down. Can I help you at all? Yes, please, run this to The chicken's working, right? Chicken's all set. Chicken, done. Fish and chips, done. Oh, no. Looking good, guys. 
Samantha's coming up right now. There's the slip. Oh, there you go. Uh, you just saved the day. 72, I got this. Looks good, right? Nice. With Lisa taking the initiative and control of the dining room. This is good. We're okay. Beautiful. That's going to get us back on track. Mark and the kitchen staff now have time to regroup and get orders out. We can order food? Yes. Here we go, folks. Sorry for the hold up. Those are really different. Those are good. Everyone likes everything out there, guys. Looks good. Having Lisa's support gives me a lot of room. I can grow back here, I can get better. Let's fire off a fish and chips and we're done. I look forward to having her back in the restaurant. Bye bye. Tonight, clearly, we had our growing pains, but we didn't give up. The spirit was here and we fought all night. Think of where we've come. I think we got through it. Good. Robbie, you were against it, but change is for the better. Let me tell you, you've got to give it your all. I will. Stay close to Mark and Lisa. They need that support, let me tell you. I'd like to spend a couple of minutes with Mark and Lisa on my own. Um, a big thank you to you all. Well thank done. You. Thank you. Excellent, well done. Yeah, Mr. Skeptical. Chef Ramsay, thank you. That was wrong. I am very, very proud of you both because you pulled it off and you stuck in there. You. Mark, you don't know how strong you are. You are a real leader, and when the chips are down, you hang on in there, and you didn't buckle. Well done. Thank you. Don't turn back. That's right. Stick together. Yeah, and it will work. Good luck. Thank you very Good much. Night. Thank you so Thank much. You. I'm looking forward to the future. I know I'm in love with my wife. I know she's in love with me. It's wonderful. Good night. Good night. Have a good night. Thank you. We took a shack on the beach and transformed it into a restaurant that can become a destination for tourists and locals. And Mark and Lisa may not have known their bottom line, but the true bottom line is they need each other to succeed. Get me the hell out of here. Wow. What a beach. In the days that followed, it quickly became clear that Chef Ramsay's many changes had the restaurant heading in the right direction. We were out of the oysters, so I gave him a scallop It's fine. It's fine. It's right. No problem. I love you. You're the best. <laughs> And with accountant Tim McClellan helping with the finances. We're going to save some money for the winter, and we'll do the hard work we need to to get it done. It's going to help Lisa a lot, too. She's really looking forward to working with you. The future is definitely looking brighter. Right, this is good. We're OK. How you doing, folks? Mark finally got what he always wanted, his wife Lisa working alongside him once again. I love you so much. Next time on Kitchen Nightmares. Oh, I'm pissed off. Chef Ramsay finds out what happened to the restaurant he tried to save. Smell that! Smell it! That's all over the meat! He is back asking the tough questions that we want the answers to. Has Tommy personally made any changes? Find out who stayed on the road to success. Have we got good news, bad news? And who veered off. Why is he lying to me? Turning the restaurant back into a nightmare. I'm so disappointed. Stay tuned, we've got an all new fringe coming up next on Fox.